Today we're going to be talking about SEO friendly URLs. Now if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the fact that sometimes in our project we just simply have this slash one, slash two, something like that with an ID and really those are not great for SEO purposes. Google and other search engines, they really want you to have a nice URL so they can identify the content in your website. Now one example of this that I could give you is in the Coders Tape website for example. Up here, if you look at the URL, we have a lesson, slash, then an ID, but then we do have introduction to PHP unit setup part one. So that way, Google kind of knows what's inside this page, just by simply having a nice SEO friendly URL. So today, I have a fresh project, and I want to show you a couple of different examples on how to make SEO friendly URLs with Laravel. So let's get right to it. Here is my fresh project. Like I said, brand new project. I haven't done anything at all. The first example that I want to show you is if, for example, we had this concept of a profile. And instead of having profiles slash and then the profile ID, I want to have the username. So going with that, let's go ahead and create a model. PHP Artisan make model for a profile. And I do need a migration for that. All right, back to PHP Storm. Let's check out the migration for create profile. And we're going to keep it extremely simple. We're just going to have a string for username. And it is going to be unique. And now this is one thing that's important about this technique that I'm showing you. This very first technique requires that it be a unique username. For example, something like an email that could be unique. But if it's something that's provided by the user and you're going to have several examples of it, it just simply would not work. I will show you how to do those as a second example. So we'll have a username and just for the sake of it, let's have a name for our user. That way we do know that we are retrieving the correct user. Great. So now let's go ahead and create a controller. Profiles controller. All right. So let's go back to PHP Storm and check out profiles controller. In here, I will just have a show as that's what I'm interested in. And in my show view, of course, I will have just for now, I will go ahead and say profile. I won't use route model binding just yet. And let's just simply return profile. That's all I want to do. Again, this is a little bit of setup so we can get this example going here. And let's go ahead and add a route for profile slash. And then we know we're going to have the ID of the profile. All simple stuff, all stuff that we've covered before in coders tape. So profiles controller at show. So now in the browser, we can just visit slash profile slash one. So obviously we don't have any profiles just yet. So let's go ahead and migrate our database, migrate. And now that we are migrated, we can run Tinker PHP artisan Tinker. And let's create a new profile. So let's say profile new profile. Let's set our username equal to maybe just user name. And then let's set the name equal to vector. I'll just keep it simple like that. And so let's go ahead and save that to the database. And there we go. All right. So now if we go back to our browser, if I visit profile one, then sure enough, I get one, right? Whatever I am passing through here, that is just simply what is passing through here. Okay. So now that we have all of that set up, let's go back here. So of course we know that this is going to be an ID. In typical fashion, typically you would say something like profile is going to equal to profile, right? And then we're going to import that up here at the top and then we'll go ahead and find the profile with that ID. And then I can just return profile. Does that work? Yes, it does. So we have our record back. So if we wanted to say profile slash username, right? Pertaining to this username right here, then of course we could say profile where username is equal to profile. Let's go ahead and fetch the first record of that. And if we visit profile slash username, sure enough, we still get the same thing. But what about route model binding? Isn't it awesome that we could just say, well, this is a profile Laravel. 
you go ahead and handle everything for us. Right, this is kind of what we want to do, but if we try that as username, of course that doesn't work. We are stuck with that slash one. So here's how you make that work. If we jump into my profile model, and we actually go into the parent model, which is this one, and we do a search here for get route key name, and there it is. So we can override this get route key name and set up whatever we actually want the column to be. So check this out, it's actually quite simple. In my profile, I am gonna go ahead and override that get route key name, and all I need to do here is return a string with the column that I want to use. In my case, I wanna use username. So if we do that, we can actually revert back to using our username, and there it is. So how cool is that? So that's how we make route model binding do what we needed to do, and we get to set what we wanna do. But this breaks down fairly quickly because this only really works if you have a unique constraint on that database. But sometimes if you're doing, for example, blog posts, a title may be used more than once. There's no reason why a user could not name two blog posts exactly the same title. So why don't we look at an example for that? Let's go ahead and exit out of Tinker here and let's create a new model. And this one is gonna be for post. And I do need a migration for that. And while we are at it, let's go ahead and make a controller because I do know I'm gonna need one of those. So my post controller. All right, let's head back to PHP Storm and take a look at that example. Let's go to the migration, create post table, and let's keep this very simple and just have a title. That's all I wanna have. So in my post controller, I will also just have a show and we know we're gonna have route model binding, so why don't we say post, post for that. That way we are taking advantage of route model binding. We'll just return the post just to make sure that we did fetch the correct thing from our database. So I need a new route and it's gonna be for posts and it's gonna have a post and this is gonna be in my posts controller. Okay, so let's head back here and run PHP Artisan Migrate. And now we have our post table, so let's go ahead and create one now. PHP Artisan Tinker. And let's create a new post and all we have for this post is just a title. So I will just say my cool title. And then let's go ahead and save that to the database. There we go. All right, so we are good to go on that. Let's head back to Chrome and I will go to slash post slash one. And if we go in here, it looks like we didn't import that properly. Let's go back here to my post controller. Yep, all right, let's go ahead and import post up here at the top. There we go. So that will work and refresh and there we go. All right, so we are properly fetching that from our database. So my cool title. The nice thing with this title again is that it could be used more than once. So we can't just simply rely on something like my cool title because if we did, then we would not be able to have repeated posts. So one trick that I've found to be very useful is to have the ID and then a dash and then a slugified version of the title, my cool title. How about that? Now the nice thing with this is that you actually don't have to do a lot of work to make it work. Check this out. If we go back to PHP Storm, we go into our web routes file, we're gonna have post slash then our post, meaning the ID, then let's tell Laravel, we're actually gonna have a dash and after the dash, I'm gonna have a slug. And that's it, as long as we have a slug right afterwards, it doesn't matter what we do this. So one dash my cool title in slug form. And if we check that out, yep, it still works. To show you the difference, if I remove that all together and I hit refresh, now we get a 404 not found. So even though we still have that one, it's not able to match to my route. Now, if I add the dash and then a slug for a variable and we hit refresh, Yep, and we really don't care about the slug. I mean, you could theoretically, sure, pull in the slug if you wanted to in your post controller right here. We could pull that in as slug, but we really don't even need it. This is really meant for just SEO purposes. Again, the nice thing with this is that if we had another post, let's go ahead and add another post with the same exact title. 
So now we have two posts, right? And I'll show you that by just calling post all. We have two posts in our database and both of them have the exact same title, but they won't conflict. Check it out. If we hit refresh here, yep, that still works. And if we had a two for the second ID, that also still works. So this is nice because it actually eliminates the need to have something funky like dash one and then dash two, dash three. You don't need to do that. Obviously your ID is always going to be unique. So that's nice. We're taking advantage of that unique ID to have a nice SEO friendly URL. All right, one more trick that I wanna show you and it is the following. Of course, once you get into creating these more complex routes, you don't wanna to have to type this in every single time that you need that route. So what we can do is I will actually pull up the welcome.blade. This is just what ships with Laravel. And somewhere down here, of course, it says Laravel. Let me go ahead and delete everything off of this. And all I'm gonna do here is I am going to add a link. And I just want a link to slash post slash one dash my cool title very complex right i really don't want to be typing this up every single time so i'll just name this link so we have this set up here let's go to my post controller and instead of returning the post let's go ahead and return a view of welcome and with that being set let's go ahead and refresh this and of course if we hit link we're basically pointing to itself and that's okay we see that that link is working so one cool thing that you can do is the following Let's go ahead and pass that post inside our view. And then in my post model, what I can do is a nice little helper to help me know exactly what the route is for that post. So let's go to post.php and you can call this whatever you want. Typically I just call it path. You can call it URL, destination. You can name this whatever you'd like. Let's just call it path. And in here we can return the actual URL that we're gonna use. Now, if you want a fully qualified URL, you can actually use the URL helper. And then inside of here, we know we're gonna have slash post, slash, and then the post ID. So we could say this ID, remember we are inside a post at this point. Then we're gonna have a slash, and then we're gonna have the slogified title. So we can use str, that's illuminate support str. Notice it's being imported up here at the top and then we can call slug, and on that we can pass this title. So this is a nice little helper. Now, every time I need to know what the path is to this post, all I need to do is go back to my welcome, is call my post path. And that will give me the path to this post every single time. Hit refresh, and if we look, click on it, yep, it still works. How cool is that? So now we have a nice way, if tomorrow for some odd reason I decided to change the way that I actually see that, then all I need to do is go ahead and just change it in this one place right here, and we got brand new URLs across the entire site. I never hard-coded an actual URL into my view. I'm simply just calling this path. Again, you can call this whatever you'd like, and you could get the fully qualified URL to this particular resource. I hope that helps and gives you a nice visual on the two most common ways that I use to create SEO-friendly URLs. As always, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. My name is Victor. Thanks for watching.